Hey guys, in today's video, I'm doing something a little bit different. I wanted to compare, just for myself, the difference between optical steady shot and built-in IBIS, or in-body image stabilization. So, for those of you who are not super familiar with what these things are, I'm going to explain them in relatively simple terms show you some samples, and then draw up some conclusions at the end of this video. Both Sony's optical steady shot and Sony's in-body image stabilization seek to accomplish the exact same goal, that is to reduce or possibly even eliminate camera shake. So if you're using a camera handheld and you're trying to focus on a subject and your hands are not the most steady in the world, you don't have a tripod, these systems are designed to help improve the outcome of that photograph. So they accomplish this by two different ways. Um, let's talk about optical steady shot first. So optical steady shot is stabilization that occurs inside of the lens. So I did a video about this Sony kit lens. This is the 16 to 50 where I disassembled it and showed you how to fix it. Um, if you ever watch that video, you'll see that there are some certain elements in this lens that are designed to move. So the way that it works is you have a certain section of the lens that essentially can move up or down and actually can tilt in four different directions, forward and back, left and right. And so when your camera is on and you are using this lens and you're trying to focus, that small element inside of the lens compensates for that little bit of shake. So it's a really easy system. The problem is, is you have to use Sony lenses because no other third party lenses really support optical steady shot. Um, on Sony cameras. So you have to buy a Sony lens that has built-in optical stabilization. And because Sony does not really release a whole ton of lenses and not all of them are very good, um, if you are using other lenses from Sigma, for example, that don't have any built-in stabilization, that poses an issue. So then we move over to in-body image stabilization, which you can remove the lens and you don't really need a lens that is optically stabilized because the sensor inside of this A6500 moves as your camera shakes. So if you're using this handheld and your camera shakes a little bit, the actual sensor is gonna go up, down, left, right, forward and back, five axis, and compensate for that little bit of camera shake. Now this is very nice because you can use any lens, vintage lenses, you can use third-party lenses, and you can still get a little bit of stabilization with your shots on the A6500. Now I'm doing this video for two reasons. I do have an A6400 review that is coming soon. And second reason is I've always been curious as to which is more effective. Uh, is optical steady shot better than in-body image stabilization or is this better than optical steady shot? So what I did was I took this little uh, dual camera setup here and I mounted my A6500 on one side and I mounted my A6400 on the other and I used some excellent Sigma prime lenses with the A6500 and then just the regular old kit lens with the A6400. And you can see in this footage that it is still very, very shaky. No matter if you are relying on optical steady shot or relying on that in-body image stabilization, the result is not great in video. Even when I tried to walk steadily and carefully with these two cameras, the result was lackluster and certainly a ton worse than if I were to simply go and use my gimbal. Now, if I wasn't moving around and I was just panning, the optical steady shot and in-body image stabilization did its job and the shots as far as panning look decently stable. But as soon as you start moving, things get out of hand. And if you try running with these cameras, really it's terrible and makes you feel sick. I should say that all of these shots were done with a 30 millimeter focal length. So 30 millimeter Sigma and then 30 millimeters zoomed in on the kit lens. Now what happens if you use a wider lens? So let's try the Sigma 16 versus 16 millimeter on the kit lens. Well, the result is a little bit better because the wider that you get, the less stabilization is necessary or the less noticeable it is, I should say. But even if you're using this for vlogging or taking video of people and you're trying to be steady with your hands, it's less than ideal. If I had to pick a winner at the end of the day between optical steady shot and IBIS, 
I'd have to lean more towards optical steady shot. I think that the images and the videos are a little bit more fluid, a little bit more stable, but IBIS does a really good job of keeping up. It's really close and I was surprised by that result because I really did think that IBIS would blow optical steady shot out of the water. So that is a small conclusion. The bigger conclusion is that neither one of these systems is really designed for video work. A lot of folks are complaining about the A6400 not having IBIS. In reality, if you look at the side-by-side -side footage, can you really tell the difference? Um, in my opinion, you really can't. So that is a definite point to remember. So again, number one, Optical steady shot looks a little bit smoother to me than IBIS. Number two, you're really not going to notice a difference between using a camera with IBIS versus using a camera just with a stabilized lens. So I wanted to test these systems again just for what they were designed to do, and I think that is for photography. So what I did was I took my Sigma 30, which is an unstabilized lens, and I put it on my A6500 snapped a portrait, and then I did the exact same portrait with the exact same lens just on my A6400. And as I looked at these photos, there were a couple of things that I realized. Number one is the way that I shoot these cameras is pretty much almost fully automated in aperture priority. So the shutter speed was a little bit faster on the A6400 versus the A6500, which is something that you notice. So because the IBIS on the A6500 compensates a little bit of that camera shake, it allows for the camera to shoot at a slower shutter speed, which is nice. But the difference really isn't huge. And in this example where you have plenty of light, you can see that both images look equally just as sharp as one another. The colors are different on the A6400, which I'll talk about in my review, but there really isn't a clear-cut winner if you ignore the color. Now, I repeated this side-by-side -side comparison using my A6500 and the Sigma 30 millimeter, again, unstabilized lens, and then I compared it to the Sony 35, which is a stabilized lens. And although you'd expect the IBIS and the optical steady shot, which by the way, do work in conjunction with one another. Essentially, it creates a five axis stabilization using some elements inside of the lens and some inside of the camera. And the result, unfortunately, is the Sony 35 is still slightly softer handheld than the Sigma 30 millimeter handheld with IBIS. Now the Sigma 30 is really a sharper lens than the Sony 35, so that should not be a surprise, but in my mind, I was expecting a little bit more from the IBIS on the A6500. Now, there are two situations in which you really see more of a benefit with IBIS or some sort of stabilization. Number one is low light. That compensation will allow you to capture more light at nighttime. Um, and number two is if you're using a really zoomed in telephoto lens, even something like Sony's 55 to 210, you really do notice as you zoom in to 210 millimeters, how much easier it is to focus on your subject and snap that photo at that telephoto focal length. I think the biggest takeaway for me of this comparison is really that you should not be scared to use unstabilized lenses on unstabilized camera bodies. I've used the Sigma series, the Sigma Trio, the 16, the 30, and the 56 on my A6000 for a couple of months now, and honestly, there have been very, very few missed shots or shots that were shaky or were blurry as a result of me not having any sort of stabilization. Um, a lot of folks ask me routinely in the comments, should I be upgrading to an A6500 to use Sigma lenses? And the answer to that is simply no. Use the best lenses out there. Right now, I think the Sigma Trio, as far as a bang for buck, is unbeatable. So definitely go check those things out and do not be scared to use them even if you have the A6000 with no stabilization. Um, you should not be relying on optical steady shot or IBIS for any stabilization in video. If you are moving around when shooting handheld video, just get a gimbal. Trust me, you will be much, much happier. Spend $300, get yourself a nice gimbal, and then you could use whatever camera you want, whatever lens you want, and you will never have to worry about stabilization inside the camera or inside the lens. So anyway, that is going to be it for this video. Let me know down in the comments what you guys thought of the performance of Optical Steady Shot versus IBIS. Um, what has your experience been like? I know a lot of you use vintage lenses, in which case, if they don't have any stabilization, the IBIS does help out a lot um, in setting up your photographs. 
Um, but I'm curious to know what your guys' thoughts are, so post down below. As always, thank you guys for watching. Thanks for all of your likes, comments, and support. Stay tuned for more. Uh, my A6400 review is coming soon, I promise. Uh, that's it for me. Thank you guys. Bye-bye.